this past weekend, I asked how you'd go about SVGing this umbrella shape such that the code only uses a single circle element and maybe two, three use copies, but absolutely no other SVG shape element. That is, if you're using a mask or a clip path, you cannot use any other SVG shape element inside it, any other circle, path, or whatever. So let's see how we do that. We start with the dimensions of our SVG, width and height, and they're going to be equal. So we just have one. And I like large numbers because then I can just round the results of computations without loss of precision and get rid of decimals because decimals are ugly and they make everything harder to read. So next thing, the top left offset. And since I want my 0, 0 point to be right in the middle, this is going to be minus half the dimension. And now I create the SVG element and I have a view box attribute. And this is going to be an array left top uh, with height. Okay, now I join this array and uh, we should be able to uh, see the compiled HTML. Yep, that looks great. Now, next we decide upon a radius for the umbrella. And it doesn't matter what we pick it to be, it just ha has uh, to be smaller than uh, half uh, the dimension of the SVG because otherwise it's just going to spill outside the SVG and that's not what we want. So um, we have the radius, let's create the circle, uh, give it that radius, and we should be seeing something now. Okay, now give it a fill that's white, and next we set stroke current color, um, and then stroke width. The stroke extends uh, half inside and half outside, and since we want a stroke that goes all the way to the middle, it means that the stroke width needs to be twice the radius. So twice the radius, and as you can see now, everything is covered. So what we'll be doing is just clipping the circle to its own shape, so that we clip out the part of the stroke that's outside uh, its uh, initial shape. So let's just uh, take this part out, give uh, this circle an ID, uh, and uh, then just put it inside a clip path. So um, okay. Next, we create a use copy. So. Um, Now we have this, and we clip it to its own shape. So what I have here is clip path URL uh, the ID, and I need to set the, an ID there as well. So now that I've done this, it's uh, clipped to its own shape. Okay, but it doesn't look like much so far. The next thing that uh, we do is uh, we compute the length of um, a slice. So as you can see here, I have six pink slices and, and uh, six white slices. So I'm going to have six of each. So n is going to be just uh, six. Then the angle corresponding to a single slice, whether it's white or pink, is going to be uh, 360 degrees over twice uh, this number n, because I have six uh, white and uh, six pink. So in total, it's going to be n plus n, 12. So that's going to be 2 pi, which is 360 degrees, over twice that uh, n. Okay. And now that I have the angle, I can compute the arc length corresponding uh, to uh, uh, a slice on the circle. So this arc length is the arc times the radius. And as I said before, I like rounding stuff. Sorry. I obviously don't like typing. Okay, uh, something else I'll be doing here is SVG uh, color crimson. Okay, now that I've done this, uh, I'll be setting stroke dash array to uh, that arc length. And we should be seeing something. Okay, it's starting to look like something. Next thing, we create a mask so that we take bytes out of those slices. And those bytes are going to be pretty much circles with uh, the diameter equal to the edge length of the polygon whose vertices 
are on those points of the intersection of the slices with the initial circle. So um, we need to get to that uh, diameter because that's going to be uh, the diameter of uh, the circle and the stroke width. So this byte diameter is uh, twice the radius of the umbrella times sine of half the central angle. Okay, so having done this, I'll just uh, copy this inside a mask. Okay, and I also have stroke, which is black. Okay, uh, and then I have stroke with uh, is that B byte, and here I set the mask again. Okay, that's not really going to work, but if I remove that, this should work now. Okay, and as you can see, it's uh, Okay, next thing that I want to do here is uh, have a stroke line cap. So stroke line cap is round. Um, okay, that didn't work for some reason. Oh, not there. Sorry about that um, for the mask. So, um, yeah, um, what I need to do is set stroke dash array, because that's what I'm forgetting. Dash array, and it's going to be that for now, but I'll be changing it a bit later. And as you can see, it's starting to look like something, but what I'll be doing here is have zero and that uh, L. So zero for the actual stroke and then spaces. And as you can see, it's starting to look like something except they're not positioned right. So what I need to do is have a stroke dash offset by half the R corresponding to one slice. And that's going to be 0.5L. So this should be working. Dash offset, sorry, like this. Um, Okay, and it's working now, but these look a bit too extreme, so I want those bytes to be small, more compact. So what I'll be doing is setting uh, a factor, just bring the circle more outwards. So um, I'll have a factor here, let's say it's 1.25. So what I have here is transform uh, scale. And let's, yeah, I should have, uh, it's not going to get interpolated like this with those quotes. It needs to be like this. Uh, and then the stroke width, it's going to be that factor times B. Okay, and now it's looking a lot better. Next thing I want to do is... have pretty much the same thing as here uh, as up to this point uh, except the fill is not going to be white uh, it's going to be current color okay and it's going to uh, be scaled down transform something like this let's see how it works that way okay I think it's still a bit too big more like this and let's also set a stroke uh, that's RGBA
so it covers and it darkens uh, the whole thing. Let's do something like this. Uh, and then stroke width uh, going to be twice the radius again. And I want... Why didn't I get the clip path as well? Okay, I got the clip path as well. That's good. So uh, let's uh, let's take that transfer out of there and put it here. Okay. So having done this, I have my umbrella. Okay, the next thing is to give it a shadow. Now, since I want to give the whole thing a shadow, uh, let's see how it works. Now, we're going to be using a drop shadow filter, and I don't know how filters work and all that stuff, so um, I'll just uh, be copying from an example. Okay, uh, let's go after the mask. So, uh, filter, shadow, and let's see what we have. Um, CSS filters, right? Um, drop shadow, this is the one. Uh, so, Hope I don't make a so uh, let's see this is how blurry it gets and let's say it's going to be um pretty much this times the radius okay now the next thing that I want to do let's go to the other uh, the offset, and it's going to be along the x-axis, along the y-axis. Uh, and let's see, this is also going to uh, depend on the radius. So, first off, let's uh, let's do something about this background. Okay. Let's see how it looks within the background. Okay, so um, now let's go back to our filter. So here I have my offset and I want the shadow to go towards the left. So that's going to be minus, let's say it's going to be 0.15. I want it to write there, radius. And pretty much the same, except it's going to be down. So with plus, what's the matter with my one key? Okay, so uh, having done this, let's see what else do I have here. Um, result. Okay, having done this, next. After the offset, I have... And I'd make this uh, semi-transparent, except it's not going to work being semi-transparent in Edge. So I'll just make it solid. So that's going to be just a solid black. And um, just uh, do the opacity. And something like, I don't know. I think I'll just leave it like that. Now, the next thing that I do... And this is going to be my name, the result name from here. Um, and then I'm going to have, okay, operator. So as you can probably tell, I have no idea how this works. Um, so uh, this is the, uh, the original, okay. Uh, 
and then I have okay so now if I apply a filter so let's say I apply a filter here Okay, it doesn't exactly work. Let's try applying it to on a group. Okay, it now works. So, um, yeah, this looks great actually. And something else I can do from uh, the CSS. Um, as you can see, this, uh, this scales nicely. But um, what I want to do here is set display flex, line item center, justify content center. Um, okay, set a width like this. It depends on the viewport, and I should be seeing it. Let's see how it looks. Yep, this looks great right now. And what I'll be doing is setting our keyframes rotate to transform rotate one turn. Um, actually, um, let's make this zero percent. So, um, okay. I think I can make it slower because it's going to look better, I suppose. Okay, so yeah, this is the rotation, even slower. So yeah, this is it. This is what I wanted to show you for today. I hope you've enjoyed this video and if you have and you want me to be able to do more stuff in the future, please consider supporting my work. You can do this by becoming a patron on Patreon. There's going to be a link in the description for that. Or you can make this kitty very happy by getting her something off her Amazon wishlist. Or you can at least share this to show the world what can be done on the web these days. Because honestly, I think it's pretty damn cool. In any event, thanks for watching.